Hello, my crafty peeps. It's Cheyenne from ecdesignstudios.com. Remember, all links are in the description bar. So, today we're doing an easy elegance card. And we're going to be using some of the new Occasion Catalog stuff. I'm trying to get y'all excited for this because there's some beautiful things in this catalog. So, we are going to be using the Carousel Birthday stamp set. This is a whole suite and it's a Adorable. So I'm going to be using the big carousel and the I love when your birthday comes around sentiment. We're going to be putting those on an E block and an H block. Keisha, you curious? I'm going to use Calypso Coral ink pad. This is the only ink pad we're going to use. So it's going to be interesting. You need snail and dimensionals. The triple banner punch. And I'm thinking there's going to be some, I believe these are metallic enamel shapes. They'll be listed on the coordinating blog post. That link is in the description bar, so just follow that, and there's a full list of the products and everything there. All right, so you're going to need a piece of black cardstock cut at one inch, and this one's four and a half inches long. A piece of very vanilla, it's one inch, and it's four inches long. And I wanted to make sure that I had a little bit extra because we're going to be using the triple banner punch on these bits. We're also going to be stamping our sentiment on it. All right, I'm going to bring over my Stampin' Trimmer because I just got this. I love it. And I want to show you what it's all about. So I'm actually going to zoom it so that you can, you know, more fully see, like, the entire thing because it's just not in frame. So hold on. Okay. So now that you can better see the Stampin' Trimmer, it is a, a pretty significantly sized piece. All right, you know, it's, it's good though, because if you're going to be doing a lot of cutting, you, you want this. I don't have to pull out the arm a whole lot, because everything I need is pretty much on this grid. I do think I'm gonna go through and, you know, every inch, inch and a half, I might mark these lines so I can measure that way too. But anyway, back to the actual tutorial. I've got a piece of eight and a half by 11, very vanilla, and I'm going to show you how I score and cut, and I can have two cards, and it's, it's done. So I want this to be top folding, so I'm going to line it up at five and a half. Now I keep my score um, blade up here, and I keep my cutting one down at the bottom. And when I go to cut, I'll explain that. So the go ahead and score it, ta-da. And the scoring one is the lighter gray one. Now I'm going to swing it over and line it up at four and a quarter. So that's cutting this piece of eight and a half by 11 and a half. Make sure that like these little notches here, that your paper's hitting both of them. All right, the reason I keep my cutting one at the bottom is so when I'm pushing up, it's also pushing it up into that instead of pulling it down. You know, it's, it doesn't make that big of a deal, but I kind of feel like it just, it's one of those things that helps me to not make mistakes. So I also usually go ahead, there's a little lip here, I'll put my thumb on that, especially when I'm cutting bigger pieces. If it's smaller, you know, I do, I do push on the ruler here. Oh, hey, it is a ruler, <laughs> so I, I'm not going to have to mark those. I'm just going to have to actually look at the ruler. We all have those epiphany moments sometimes. So I cut, and then I pull it back down, and then... There we go. We've already got two cards, two top folding cards. They're already scored and ready to go. Et voila. And while we've got this, why don't we go ahead? We're going to need to cut down a piece of peekaboo peach. So you're going to end up wanting this. I'm going to go ahead and cut it at, you know, four and a quarter. That's what I tend to do, especially for cards. So, um, so yeah, four and a quarter by five, five and a half. Yeah five and a half. I'm going to go ahead and make that cut. So now I just have like two quarters. It's a lot easier to better use your paper. So now I'm going to take and cut this down to four by five and a quarter. So that'll allow some of the very vanilla card base to shine through. All right, there we go. And just like that, I didn't have to open up an arm. So I, I kind of feel like because this is a solid surface that you're, you're cutting on and it's not the swing out piece where you just have like 
the arm. That's all that's supporting this. I, I just think it's, it's a little sturdier. It's a little more exact and precise. Now I right, put that off to the side and I'm gonna bring you, bring you back down to me so that we can create this card and you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you're back down with me. I'm gonna set aside the card base and we're just going to work on that piece of um, peekaboo peach. I like it because I think it's, this is going to work for boy or girl because it's orange. And we've got our Calypso Coral. We are going to go ahead and ink up our Ferris wheel. There are, this coordinates with the Lift Me Up um, bundle, like there's the framelits that go with that and that's the one with the hot air balloons. So some of the framelits will cut out the little Ferris wheel, you know, cupcakes on here so you can launch those up into 3D. And because this is kind of a bigger size, I'm actually going to take the ink pad to the stamp instead of the other way around, just so I can make sure that everything is getting nice and stamped and juicy, and it kind of helps it to not get ink all around the edges. So there we go. Nice and juicy. Now I want this to kind of be in the center, but up a little bit. So not quite on this horizontal, just raise up just a little bit from exact center. Because I want the little banner to go on the bottom. Or do I want it going on the top? No, I want it on the bottom. Why not? So, I'm going to get that lined up. Let it kind of drop. You know, be careful. You don't want to wiggle it and smudge it. So I'm just putting pressure on the top. Now sometimes with these bigger stamps, it's better if you stand up and push down. You're getting a better impression and more force, especially if this is more of a solid image. This is more of a lot of fine lines when this carousel, but if it was like one of the, the base images for a, a double or triple layer stamp, you're going to want to like really get in there and press it down. And I'm leaving, letting it, you know, sink in. Let that ink sink into the card. And there we go. Got a nice little, not quite a tone on tone, because we're using the Calypso Coral instead of the, the Peekaboo Peach. That would be a lot more of a, a subtle look. So if you're wanting more of that, then go ahead and use the Peekaboo Peach, and it gives it more of a watermark. In fact, actually, while we got this out, let's grab our piece of um, very vanilla that's one by four, I believe it is. And we're going to go ahead and stamp up our sentiment with the Calypso Coral. So, all right. Now I'm wanting the banner to be like at the front, so I'm going to stamp it off to the edge. Again, I'm pushing down. What's nice about the Stampin' Up! blocks is there is a little um, recess in the side, so you can kind of hold on to that. So I really feel like I'm getting a nice even pressure because I'm pushing down on like all four points and then I'll use my index fingers to kind of give a little extra pressure. Get on letting it sink in before I remove it because there are a lot of like fine little details in this stamp. I really think that, that that helps a lot. I also, what my work surface is, this is a piece of foam board. See, foam board, your foam core, so that you can just buy in the poster section. Usually, I've spray painted it black because I had an extra spray can. I thought, why not? Silicone mat and my grid paper, but I really think like the foam core, it's got a little bit of give, but it, it's not too much give. So, all right, that's all the stamping there is for today's project. So, let's get all of that out of the way. Let me get, get a little organized. Organization is, is very important. So, let's bring in our little banners. So, we are going to go ahead and get those going. So you can do one inch, one and a half, and two inch. It, the little guides are right there for it. So that's, that's really nice that you have those options. So, all right, I've got it all the way back in as far as it can go. I'm gonna go ahead and punch it. And then we have a nice little banner. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the black one, basic black. So it's one inch too, so we're only going to see the very end of it. I've also got a trick for this, for not just doing banners, this punch. 
that I'm going to use in the future. It was kind of an aha moment for me, but that's going to be in a future tutorial. Now these little bits, these are actually pretty fantastic for using on like Project Life pages or maybe even another card, but save them. I'm sure you can find some use for these little shapes because they're, they're just kind of adorable. All right, so now, since these are the same size, we just are going to have a little bit of black. Now, depending on how long this is, it's going to determine how much black you have. Or actually, I think I'm going to pop it out on both sides like that. So we, we got a nice little extra frame there. So let's go ahead and get our sentiment banners together. All right, there we go with that. I'm gonna pop that on. I think, it, yeah, I'm, I think I'm gonna cut that off. So let me go ahead and trim that off real quick. All right, yeah, I think that fits on the card better. Now, you know, I think this needs a little bit something. You could just like adhere this down, adhere it onto your card front, and you're good to go. But I'm going to do a little bit more. So, so let me just show you. All right, you could just go ahead, use your snail, adhere all that down, maybe some dimensionals for this. Pop on a little dot, which we can actually go ahead and do. So, just one of the little circles. This is the, the silver enamel shapes, I'm pretty sure it is. So you've got star and heart. you got Harry Potter coming in. It's great. It's great. So, yeah, you could go ahead. You could either hear all that down. And ta-da, that's a finished product. But let me show you how you can oomph it up just a little bit. So, or you can take a pair of scissors, you know, open them up and use that and distress the edges. I've got this tool, and since I don't particularly like to risk cutting my fingers, I'm going to go ahead and use this. So this is, it's giving the same effect that you would get if you just opened up your scissors. So if you don't have this, it's okay. Just open up your scissors and go over it just as if you are curling a ribbon. So I'm just going to go along all four edges of this. I'm just going to raise it up just a little bit. It's just going to distress the edges. Can give a little bit of extra visual in, uh, interest so you see that there and now let us bring back our calypso coral oh there it is it's hiding on me and i'm going to grab just a little used sponge here and i'm just going to kind of get it on that distressed part with the Calypso Coral just to give it a little, little more of a defined edge. If you wanted to have more of that ink blended look, I suggest you know blending it on before you distress it and then going back in and distressing the edges if you want. Um, but if you want it to like blend out and give that almost halo vintage shadow going on, then do that part first, distress your edges, and then go back in like this to uh, get everything on your edges. So, all right. So that was just a quick little, you know, couple seconds extra. And, you know, it does so much to give you just a little something, something. You know what else we're going to do? Let's get our clear wink of Stella and brush this on the cupcake frosting that's just going to be so adorable of course if you're making this for a boy someone of the male persuasion maybe maybe not do this step but i don't know i mean it's it's kind of subtle it's okay so all right let's get our snail adhesive on the back of our card front we're going to attach it right to our card base now I will say, when you're attaching things to the card base, make sure it's going in the, the direction that you want it to be in and not upside down. So 
Um, I'm talking from personal experience here. Oh, there we go. All right, that's down. Before I add on anything else with dimension, why don't we go ahead and, and go crazy because that's, that's what happens when you're, you're creating. And we are going to use the Because Spoiling You is so much fun. And we're just going to stamp it on the inside of the card. You don't have to do this. You can just write your own message. But using the Calypso Coral here. It's a one ink wonder card. And just let me make sure, make sure it's going the right way up. All right, just pop that down. Again, putting some nice even pressure. I'm feeling like, you know, with my fingers and my thumbs, I'm giving some good pressure. Push down a little bit with my index fingers, let it soak in and pop. That is all done and set. And this card has become just so much more than I thought it was gonna be. Let it dry a little bit because we don't want a smudgy smudgy. Let's get a couple dimensionals onto our sentiment here. They're all wanting to come off. All right, so we just got two. All right, and then we're just gonna attach that right to the bottom, going right up to where that little distressed edge is. I want that to show a little bit, but there we go. That is our finished card, just as easy as that. If you have, um, Stampin' Up! has the gold and I believe the silver little stickles type thing. I don't remember what they're, they're actually called, but you could totally pop that on. That would give it a little bit more of a, a three-dimensional feel. I think I'm gonna have to get those because I, I know I've mentioned them in at least one other video. So I think I would probably use them. It does take a little bit more time for those to dry, but anyway, this is our quick and easy, easy elegance birthday card using carousel birthday. Yeah, yeah, that was a little redundant, but that's what it is. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. I love to get your comments and your feedback, as long as they're, you know, constructive and positive. It's fabulous. Um, if you're already a subscriber, I am so glad to have you guys subscribe to my channel. I love that you come back and watch the videos that I, I make. It makes me feel so special. If you have any questions, want to see a specific Stampin' Up! product demo, or are interested in hosting a virtual party, feel free to contact me. You can leave a comment with all of that. If uh, you want to contact me about a virtual party, following the links to my Stampin' Up! page, there's an actual form there that you can fill out, and it's a little bit more in-depth that, you know, so we, we know what, what you're wanting and what page you're on, and we can all be on that same page. Um, that's ecdesignstudios.stampinup.net. That's also where you go if you want to place an order with me. PDFs of all current Stampin' Up! catalogs can be found on my website. The occasions and celebrations will be going live on January 4th. That's when you can start to order from it. I think I might give you all a little sneak peek and make it go live January 3rd. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, it, but if you want a paper copy of the catalogs just place an order with me and I send those to you for free as long as you've placed an order within the last six months. Oh, all right, that's it for today. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.